Okay, um, here's a Royal Enfield gearbox from a 1933 250 bullet and I think it's probably one of the first foot change gearboxes um, you know after the hand changes because this mechanism in here is quite a throwback to the hand change system. All this lot inside here was missing. We had this big circular cover and a gear lever and everything inside it was missing so I've cobbled together some bits from later models and altered them and put a few other bits of my own in there and actually got it working now and changing gears as it should. So we'll show it working now and we'll see this, the gear operator arm as it's called, moving as I change gears. First of all, this first gear is down, so I'll spin the uh, shafts, click, we're into first, back to neutral, click into second, click into third, and finally click into fourth. Now we'll go back down through the gears from fourth, down to third, into second, back to neutral, and lastly, hopefully, back into first. There we are. And there we are, back to neutral again. And now I'll open this up and I'll explain what's inside it and how it works and what was missing and so on. I'll have to take this off. And it was just clicked through the gears there actually as I turned that with the spanner. That's not a worry though. Right, I had to make the spacing up just right on this so that uh, I could have the gear lever moving without binding. So that's a critical length, all that lot stacked up on that bolt there. And then we'll get this nut undone on here. As this separates the gear lever from the mechanism that it's bolted to. And then we'll be able to have a look inside. This all took quite a bit of figuring out because I'll show you that all I had was virtually nothing between this and the selector arm at the moment. So we'll take that off. That hole there goes over this stud and moves this mechanism, which is something that I pinched from a much later Royal Enfield. We've uh, been improvising here. I've actually got, if I can leave this off, get it off. I might have to go and get the screwdriver. I'll just step over there in a sec. This is a camshaft bush from a Triumph Tiger Cub, which just fits in to the gear lever boss nicely to steady that up. So it's not wobbling all over the place. Then after that, we've got this lot. Now these bits are from more recent Royal Enfield bullet models, bullets and the like. So this was straight out of a bullet, as was this. And all this lot I had to put together myself. That in there is how it came. We just we just had that and this. So <clears throat> I've had to come up with all this lot. Um, this disc at the back is actually part of a steering damper uh, off the bottom yoke of some motorbike or other. I'm not even sure what, but uh, I was able to cut it and grind it and make it fit in there. Drill a couple of holes through it, stick some bolts through. I had to round off the heads of the bolts. Well, one's an Allen bolt anyway, but it's been skimmed down slightly smaller diameter. That one is an M6 bolt with a nut screwed right up to the head of the bolt and then the whole lot's been rounded off in the lathe. And then in between we've got a sandwich of another nut that locks that together and some washers. And then this nut has been squeezed in the vise so it's tight on the threads because this thing has to be able to pivot like that backwards and forwards. That spring is another bit robbed out of a Royal Enfield bullet from much later years. We've got a couple of washers in there. I had to take this thing apart and put it back together quite a number of times before I was happy with how it all worked. But finally, 
You see these two here engage with the selector mechanism return springs to centre it all back up ready for the next gear change. So we put that in there like that. There it is, they're located in those sets of springs behind. Then we have this. by the Triumph Tiger Cub camshaft bush and then we put this back on so when I move the gear lever because this hole passes over this stud when I turn when I move the gear lever it actually swings this about and it grabs the relevant teeth on that ratchet and moves it from one gear to the next up or down this back on. This. Let's do them up. Took quite a bit of time to. Uh, get everything set up and spaced just right. Lots of uh, trying various washers and shims and so on initially to get the settings that I wanted so that I could get this bolt to do it tightly without jamming the whole lot up. There we are, and you hear it coming down through the gears there again actually. And if I step over here again, and if you want to watch the quadrant there, we'll see we're in neutral. One shaft spinning independently of the other. There we are, and now we're into first gear. You can see how fast the main shaft would have to spin for a very low speed at the gearbox sprocket. Back to neutral. Second. Third and fourth. And now we'll go back down to third. Second, neutral, and back to first again. So that's all the gears working on this vintage Royal Enfield Bullet gearbox. And uh, I've got to say, I'm very happy with how that's worked out. It took a lot of head scratching and a little bit of uh, lateral thinking with some later bullet parts in there. But it's all worked out very well, and I think it's ready to go back to the old now. That's another thing.